Retesting 49,000 on the chart could be possible. Here is where we've been stalling. I'd say that pattern is bullish. Under this rising trend line, it may perhaps make a breakthrough. Here, Bitcoin may be successful. Keep in mind that initially there was resistance and later there was unwavering support. Here we have a Bitcoin window for you. We were able to break below it and it remains a resistance level. Then proceed with caution as it may begin to pour out in a significant way. According to AmCrypto, Spot Bitcoin ETF saw a massive increase in daily activity and inflows on February 20th. Seven of the ETFs had a total volume of $6.94 billion, according to crypto monitoring tool Sentiment. Additionally, this was the busiest day for the ETF since their approval in January by the SEC. The demand and supply curve for Bitcoin may remain unchanged despite the increased activity of exchange-traded funds ETFs. Reason being, investors aren't going out of their way to purchase and hold the coin. As a result, the value of Bitcoin has remained unchanged. The current price of Bitcoin was $51,685 as of this writing. Retail demand must be extremely high for the price of Bitcoin to rise. However, it appears that this is not the case. For example, AmCrypto looked to examine the coin search data on Google Trends. Our data shows that the global Bitcoin search had a score of 29. It did not appear to be sufficient to trigger considerable demand for BTC, despite the fact that it was an increase. The Bitcoin chart is familiar to you. For the past, oh, two weeks or so, this has been the chart that I've shown you almost daily. Take another look at the spot where we've gotten bogged down. We've been holding our ground under this trend line that is rising upwards. Keep in mind that there was some pushback. After that, it turned into a never-ending cycle of support. We were able to break below it, and it remains a resistance level. What I'm trying to argue is that Bitcoin may be successful here. It might be able to get over this stage. That is what I'm trying to convey because, all right, let's zoom in on this chart and see what we can see. What do we get if we examine this pattern development in its current state? Allow me to adorn these lines. There is a sideways consolidation occurring with an up move. It looks like some sort of design. Do we not recognize our tendencies? Progression ascending, lateral right angle near right angle, I'd say that pattern is bullish. It may suddenly erupt. It seems to be stuck at resistance at the moment, doesn't it? If it fails to pass through, the quickest move is typically the one that fails, isn't it? To rephrase, if you see an opportunity for Bitcoin to break through, it will likely be within the next day or two. Be cautious, because it could start to dump heavily if it can't break through this 44,000-ish level. Close above to check. At this very moment, nevertheless, there is a chance that it might reclaim the 40,000, 44,000 mark. If that's the case, retesting 49,000 on the chart could be possible. Once again, gold is behaving itself. When compared to the US dollar, it has an inverse connection. What we might observe here is that gold persists. It was on. The verge of returning to its previous peak a few days ago, but fell short. Next, the employment report was released. Gold has a tough time competing with a rising dollar. It will be extremely difficult for the dollar to maintain its recent sharp ascent. But hey, we're still on the right track with this trend line, aren't we? That level is available to us. You have this space over here and this space over here. Many people are on board with this. The larger pattern is the one that dominates, in my opinion. For example, while looking at a larger time frame like a weekly chart, it is crucial to keep this trend in mind. You can see how negligible the price action is since this is the weekly chart and whatever this does over here. I am concentrating on this design. Yes, shoulder. From shoulder to head to shoulder again. Has not yet burst out once again. Still needs confirmation and a break of the neckline, but that's the overall trend. This choppy quality is seen once again. If we begin to descend to the low of this shoulder around $1,850 or $1,800 again, that would be my sole concern. If you begin to do that, that pattern may not hold. While trading within this range, in my goodness, we're still above $2,000, this pattern will reign supreme. Consequently, it is my responsibility to follow that pattern. First, the Federal Reserve is aiming towards three rate decreases, according to Jerome Powell's statement on 60 Minutes last night. They have already slashed their rates as much as they can this year, according to their calculations. Keep in mind that those were the market prices for six. We're down to five left. We'll examine that Federal Reserve watch gadget shortly. Once again, the crucial point was the first rate drop anticipated for 20 in the second half of 2024. Here we will review some important things regarding the Fed. Once again, though, Jerome Powell is leading the market with great conviction toward three rate reduction beginning in the second half of the year. The FedWatch tool was my last stop a short time ago. 
may remains the first cut in terms of pricing on the market. Later on though, we will notice some changes. Not a problem. Up next, Caterpillar outperforms in terms of earnings. Their revenue shortfall was negligible, just negligible. Following today's results beat, the stock is trading marginally higher. We should continue this. The situation becomes much more intriguing at this point. We are familiar with the yield curve and its inversion. Curiously, the yield curve appeared to be about to one invert a couple of weeks ago. Once again, looking at historical data, we can see that market declines typically occur when it uninverts, correct? It's intriguing, but that's actually the outcome. In most cases, the inversion phase occurs just before a stock market crash and subsequent economic downturn. Curiously, the inversion is beginning to rise again, likely influenced by the abundantly positive economic data and other external variables, so the UN inversion was about to happen. Now it's beginning to broaden its course once more, indicating that the economy is strong in the short term and that the UN inversion is still going strong. As a further step, we will see that private sector layoffs are increasing and government positions are going up. As a result, there was yet another increase in government hiring if you check the numbers for Friday. To be honest, we are all aware of the national and international debt crises that we are a part of. The government, however, keeps hiring. Almost every day, news reports surface about further layoffs at publicly traded corporations and private sector positions. Once again, the layoffs aren't cutting into non-farm payrolls enough to cause them to go negative, which means the government is making up for lost jobs. However, I believe it is something that needs to be monitored as a trend moving ahead. Following that, on Friday, the NASDAQ 100 index would have been lower if Amazon, NVIDIA, and Meta were not components. Give that some thought. Friday, the Nasdaq was up by more than 200 points. Taking removing only one, two, or three Nasdaq 100 stocks and the amount of points they contributed to the market would have caused the index to fall. This informs us something about the size of the market, which is why it's significant. What this tells us is that many equities are leveling out, but a small number of stocks are still leading the market substantially upward. Looking at the width reveals that 52-week highs were actually 52-week lows. Quite a few companies are currently trading above their 50-day moving averages, which is surprising given how few there are. 